All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Marcus from Hostaway. I wish you a warm welcome to our January webinar. Today, we're going to talk about our product, and I expect quite a high attendance for this, uh, for this webinar. As usual, we are going to record this, and we uh, are going to accept questions. So please use the QA section. Now we can start. So um, yeah, uh, for those of you who are new here, uh, Hostaway is the leading all-in-one short-term rental software for property managers. We've grown quite a lot uh, recently. If you want to say hi to anyone, you can use the use the chat there. Uh, we're a, um, we got about 170 staff right now. Uh, a lot of them are on the, on the East Coast in uh, North America and in Central Europe. Uh, but as you can see on the map where where we have staff a bit everywhere, I think almost 40 different countries now. Um, what makes us different is that we're an elite partner of Verbo. We're a premier partner of Booking.com and a preferred plus partner of Airbnb. Um, all our software is built in-house, so we do not use any, any channel managers. But we build a lot of functionality on top of the best channel manager that we've got. That's what we're gonna talk about in this webinar. But now let's have a look, a quick look at the agenda for this session. So first we're gonna go through 2023, uh, what we released. Uh, if you're an existing user of Hostaway, thank you very much for making it here. Uh, please listen into this part to make sure that you didn't miss anything. Um, uh, we're also going to share with you if there's new functionality that you don't know how, how to use, how to take into use or, or how to uh, adopt it. We're going to help you with that as well. Then we're going to have a brief look at the market trends and predictions for 2024. Uh, and then we're going to show you a sneak peek of our own roadmap. And if there's any competitors on this call, which I'm sure there are, you want to stick around for this section where we share all our secrets with you. Uh, but yeah, we're going to take a good 45 minutes before we get there. So you might as well go away and get yourself a cup of coffee. Then we're going to get to the exciting part, which is Q&A. So once again, in the chat, you can talk to each other. Uh, we are going to be answering questions from the QA section. So please put them in there. And if you want to put feedback in the QA section as well, that, uh, that works well. So, all right, let's move forward. So we got here on the call today, uh, once again, I'm Marcus, I'm the, I'm the CEO here. Uh, I'm based in South Beach, Miami. We also have Maria who will be taking over here. She's calling in from Barcelona, our VP of product. And we got Josh from San Antonio, Texas, who's our chief customer officer. So Maria, why don't you take it off? Thank you, Marcus. Hello, everyone. Uh, forgot to mention there is a little poll that will run in, in a couple of slides. Um, we will be asking you, uh, what's your favorite feature that we released in 2023? So stay tuned for that. All right, so you, what a year, right? 2023 has been, um, you can see it here. We basically uh, raised the industry largest single investments from a single entity well, to the tune of 175 million. So what does that mean, right? So that means that it's, it is proof that we're doing things right as a company and we're doing things right for you as our customers as well. So last December we had a kickoff with all of the uh, with all of the teams for Q1 and um, to basically outline the cha the, uh, the challenges ahead of us and the the goals that we want to achieve in 2024. Um, for that meeting I drew up some some stats uh, on the releases because sometimes it's actually, easy to look uh, to lose a little bit of the uh, the how much hard work actually the teams have put uh, across the year and I wanted to put it in numbers right so we actually did many many releases of which 250 plus of them were customer facing releases meaning uh, features functionalities um, improvements that you can actually see in the dashboard you can see it in the mobile app that you can use every day. That actually equates to around five a week, which is quite a feat for any software company out there. Um, in the background, we do do a lot more. We do. Uh, we actually have teams dedicated to ensure that the platform performs, that it's stable, that it's uh, it's available for you at all times, um, so you don't have to worry about anything. 
We were the first ones to use AI in the uh, listing description. So you can create beautiful listing descriptions uh, using AI or generative AI. Um, also on the guest replies to improve the guest communication. Um, we can see in the data that it's 25% of the inbox messages sent through our inbox do actually use AI or have been redacted using AI. We have a, a very easy to use public API. I don't say that. It's our partners that uh, tell me this. We have added 35 new integrations last year, so 35 new partners to our marketplace. Um, to put it in context, we actually receive 35 requests a month to integrate with Hostaway. And we only choose those that are valuable to our customers and they have a good product, quality product that we want to add to our stack. Um, today, around 30% of our customers use the public API one way or the other. And we added also a new, and I'll go back to top partnership statuses in, in a minute, but we added Google Vacation Rentals as a new channel. Uh, back in August, and already since that time, uh, it's become the number four booking channel for us and for our customers. Um, going back to the top partnership statuses, we maintain what we call the triple crown. The triple crown is the highest partnership statuses that a PMS channel manager can achieve through the integration with this channel, so Airbnb, Verbo, and Booking.com. And this is, for me, key. It's very, very important because it's the only way that the software provider like us, a channel manager like us, can ensure that you have bookings, that you get bookings, that you don't lose money because of double bookings or downtimes. Any other PMS or channel manager that do not have these top partnership statuses, they're missing out. And the reason is because uh, the channels actually have very, very strict requirements on the integration, and they measure us by those three requirements. And that basically ensures that our integration are the best possible at all times. Then also 2023 mark a very important milestone for our customer success team, uh, represented here also by Josh, and he's very much uh, the man behind this key milestone in 2023. So I'm going to let him speak to it. Yeah, thanks, Maria. Yeah, the big year last year for us and on a couple of different fronts here. And so I'm glad to have this here. So uh, we launched our customer success managers. And what that is for anybody that doesn't doesn't know is this is not your kind of uh, white glove support. It's 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 100 percent. These these guys and gals that are on this team are here to make sure you're successful. One of the uh, 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 one of the uh, uh, the things here at Hostway we really strive for is our customer success is our success. It's one of our values. It's on our website, right? And this is it in action, right? So these guys and gals here on this team, they don't look and see, you know, what's broken. You don't reach out to them and say, hey, this is broken. I need you to fix it. While they can do that, their job 100% is to make sure that you are successful. They look at your account. They make sure if you're having issues with Airbnb or maybe something's not set up correctly where you'd get the most sort of... Um, uh, uh, of bookings, they go in and, and help you out with that. They have onboarded, they've looked at thousands and thousands of different clients. They know what good looks like. They know what bad looks like. They're going to advise you to help them make you successful in not only with Hostaway, but just in the industry in general. Uh, so these these guys and gals, I'm going to drop a link right now into this 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 chat here. Um, if if while we're going through here, you want to set up a call with these uh, these team members to review your account um, or look and, 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 and you don't know about some of these features and you want to see how to use them, Use that form there. Uh, you can get in touch with them, uh, set up a call with them. They're there to help you out, right? So we continue to invest heavily into our customer success teams here at Hostway. It's our commitment to you as a client. Uh, we're the only ones doing it. We're going to be the only ones doing it because we've always done it and we know what makes us successful and it's been you guys. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Josh. All right, so we move to the next slides. I'm just going to dig in a little bit more on the, on the actual releases that we did in 2023. Um, our mission is to be the all-in-one and one-for-all solution that helps you to effectively run and grow your business, right? So that vision became a reality a few years ago. Uh, I think it's called Hostaway. But in 2023, we took a bigger step towards accelerating that vision. And we added a new product on top of our main product, which is Smartlux, which is uh, a product that will um, allow you to further automate the guest experience. Uh, through Smartlux, we support today um, the biggest brands in the markets, namely Schlage, Yale, um, Quickset, Titilog, Nuki, Igloo, sometimes I forget names, but a bunch of others as well. 
and we have you covered all over. In a couple of slides, I will actually show you a little bit more that we're going to do in 2024 uh, for Smalox, but this is a product that's going to be continue evolving uh, throughout 2024 as well. We added ChatGPT uh, replies in the descriptions, as I mentioned earlier. We work as well on improving performance of a few products, specifically uh, on the on the uh, calendar performance as well by 3x. Um, we did a mobile app overhaul. Um, we actually have a team dedicated to the mobile app, so a lot more is going to happen on 2024 about it, but, uh, or, so, or to the mobile app, but we improved the calendar in the mobile app, we added a new revamp inbox, um, you now have a new page called listing details that is accessible through the inbox and through the uh, reservation page with all the details for the listing ready for you to check there. Um, we added a also an online check-in form um, to the uh, to our guest experience uh, feature mix. This is through the guest portal. The online check-in form allows you to uh, retrieve information from the guest or collect information from the guest, namely um, emails, the guest and the guests, all of the guests on uh, the will stay at your property, emails, uh, pictures, IDs, um, telephone numbers, etc. that you can then later use to either verify the guest, market the guest, etc. Um, we created customizable rental agreements per listing. Uh, you can go to the listing, create a rental agreement, and then use either the guest portal flow or our message automations to automate the process, have the guest um, sign electronically the rental agreements, and save this, the signature in the reservation for your records as well. Um, we added Google Vacation Rentals already spoke about it, uh, verbal messaging API and verbal reviews. This is, these two are quite important, verbal messaging API is in particular, because it removes a lot of the uh, of the problems that we had on the on the previous integration before through the proxy uh, the proxy email communication. The key here to understand also in going back a little bit uh, to why do we want to keep these high partnership statuses or the highest partnership statuses uh, with verbal with Airbnb with booking.com is because it allows us to be the first one implementing these new improvements or these new products. And actually they consult with us and they ask us, what should we do? What is the best way for us to build this message and API? Because we already have the experience, right? Um, we created, um, basically we added the possibility to the booking engine or for you to create uh, multiple booking engines. So that will allow you to sell um, different portfolios, if you have different agreements with different owners, have different websites, not have everything on the same website. Um, on financial reporting, on the expenses uh, and payments, we added a new version for exp expenses as well, tracking automated expenses on financial reporting. Um, more functionality to the guest payments uh, feature, so you can uh, um, track charges a lot easier than before. Uh, we added the possibility of managing refunds from HostAway instead of having to go to Stripe, so you can do everything uh, within HostAway. And we added a few more enhancements to the upsells components that you can use in the booking engine and in the guest portal. Namely, you can do now, you can uh, use videos, pictures, and have better descriptions as well. That's will um, entice the guest to, to um, buy the upsell. So that's it for the releases for 2023. So we move to the next slides. I think that's for you, Marcus. All right. Thanks for uh, everyone for putting good questions in the Q and A section. I think uh, if you added uh, some of you have added questions to the chat, uh, please add them to the Q and A so we can go through them at the end. I just wanted to share a bit about what we see in the industry. We have uh, we have thousands of property managers and owners using our, our platform. We also have, have over uh, almost 200 integrated software partners. And uh, so we we have quite a quite an exclusive space to see what's going on in the industry. And um, and I'll take you through a couple of the trends that you should keep in mind because I know for some of you 2024 is looking very very clear, you know exactly what's going to happen. For others, it's looking more uncertain. So first of all, 
uh, the vacation rental boom will continue, but not without casualties. Um, when I say a boom, I mean demand. So the demand is higher now than it's ever been before. And if you don't believe me, just look at the quarterly earnings calls of Airbnb, Booking.com, and Expedia. They will all mention this. Um, now, there are some casualties. Um, I, I gave these predictions about a month ago, and I knew that already in January we'll see at least one company go bankrupt. And actually a few, a few bigger companies went bankrupt, especially if they're doing rental arbitrage. The challenge is that... If you're basing your business on ADRs, that's average daily rates, going up 20% per year like they have in the US for the last uh, two years, and suddenly they stabilize or even decrease in your area, well, then, yeah, then bad things are going to happen. I actually met with one of our customers yesterday and he said he lost a property that someone had bought. This was a house that used to cost half a million just two years ago. Now... She had bought one for one and a half million and it was producing great rental income. It was producing around 15,000 a month. So 180,000 a year, which is a decent cap rate. It's not the best, but it's, it's okay. Challenge she had though, was that she had to pay 15,000 in expenses for her property. So the mortgage, and uh, she only got 12,000 in. So she was losing 3,000 a month. And I don't know how she didn't figure that out before she bought the property, but she was forced to sell it within six months. Fortunately for her, she sold it for 200000 more, so she came ahead. But this is an example of a casualty where, where it simply doesn't work. You cannot expect things to always go up. They might stabilize as well. Um, the same thing goes for real estate prices. And as we've seen, despite increase in interest rates, um, and in some cases, lower, lower ADRs, on short-term rental size, real estate prices haven't really budged. There's some inventory available, but it's it's not the best. The best properties, people are sitting on that. Um, tech stacks will become more standardized. This is very evident. The, the consolidation within the space over the last couple of years, and we spoke earlier about how we're an all-in-one solution uh, this is what what is what is happening right now and what we're seeing. A lot of our customers are, for example, using dynamic pricing, um, which has become a standard. But if you look back just a few years ago, a lot of property managers were using a whole variety of tools. Today, they're overall using fewer tools. And also within each category of tools, there's a couple of companies that stand out that have become market leaders uh, in the PMS section, Hostaway is one of them. Uh, but there's many other subsectors as well that are doing really well. Um, vacation rentals will continue to see fantastic growth. This is something that's very important to keep in mind that a lot of other industries, you know, we, we might be struggling depending on your location. You might be struggling because the ADRs are down. Maybe some, some owners didn't do the mortgage calculations properly. But there's a lot of industries that are not growing right now. Um, and a lot of them are, for example, very, very big. You see them every day when you step outside the, the, your house. For example, fast food, that's not growing. Uh, cars, you probably see, saw a car today or you're going to see one today. That's an industry that's not growing. Vacation rentals and travel will continue growing over the coming years. And what that means is... You just got to hold on. Things will turn out just fine. Uh, we will become the market leader in the PMS industry this year. This is really, really exciting. It's a, it's a tight race, but we're pretty sure we'll make it there. Um, also, on the tech side, and this also goes for, uh, for property managers. If we have property managers out there who are looking to sell their business, um, I've got good news and bad news for you. So first of all, uh, acquisitions will accelerate. Just last week, Skift, no, this week, Skift came out with an article about the quiet acquisitions in the vacation rental property management space. Uh, acquisitions are taking place. However, you cannot just go and raise funding the way you could in 2021 and 2022, even 2023. Uh, so actually 2023 saw a drop of 95% in travel tech funding. So even though we we raised a lot of 
capital as also a hundred seventy five million, we were we were uh, quite out of the ordinary here. So it's uh, it's getting harder to raise capital. But on the other hand, acquisitions are still taking place, but the valuations are probably down. Uh, all in one solutions uh, will will take over. This is not only us. Uh, many other companies in the space are are moving in that direction. And the reason is is very simple. Every other industry out there has has done the same thing. Today, when you go to a restaurant, they'll have they'll have one system that assigns you the table, but it's the same system that sends your order to the kitchen. It's the same system that prints your bill and makes sure that you paid before you leave. Those used to be many different systems, including papers and uh, pens, but now they have all-in-one solutions. And that's also where vacation rentals are going. The impact of AI, finally, will normalize data for property managers between different softwares um, and provide greater visibility on their operations. AI, in general, will change a lot of the everyday activities that we see, a lot of the the work that people are doing around the world, AI will have a tremendous impact on it. However, I think anyone who says that they know exactly what it's going to look like even a year from now, they're they're either hoping for the best or they're outright lying. Because this technology and the adoption of, of, of it is extremely fast. It took about 20 years after the internet came out before people even knew the word internet. Uh, in the case of AI, it's not going to take 20 years. And even after that, by the way, it took another 20 years before everyone had internet in their pocket. So it's not going to take 40 years for us to see AI in everything that we do. But it is something that I would recommend. If you're a property manager, stay up to date and see what is it that's being done. Go and read the descriptions of your competitors' properties and see, is AI doing something there? There's a lot of image editing tools that are utilizing AI. You know, one of the main selling points of any property is, of course, the pictures that you have. So um, stay stay on top of the trends. Don't worry too much. There's not going to be one AI that comes and takes your job or ours. But the overall impact of a shift towards using AI tools will be massive. So those are the, the predictions here. Now let's move forward. All right. Thank you, Marcus. Okay, so I was answering some questions. Someone asked me, can we move to the next slide? Yeah, someone. All right, sorry. That's your time, John Short. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to say what we're going to do in 2020. I know. You gotta, you, this is the best part, though, is we look forward to the, the second part of this call. It's the, the sneak peek on what we're doing with the roadmap. And I got to start this by saying, Product loves when other departments introduce their roadmap. So especially when it's customer facing, because they get to commit to things that they necessarily want to do. Just say it's just easy. You're supposed to do it, right? So uh, thanks, Maria. Thanks, Marcus. That's one of the things I got to point out to you guys. Uh, here at Hostway, you know, insights like Marcus just shared, you're not going to get that in any of these other competitors, not ones that I've seen, for example. They're just really not in tune with the industry as well as our, our CEO and co-founders are. I mean, just a, a kind of uh, Marcus was scrubbing toilets when we first started Hostaway uh, as part of the research here. So he's dedicated in the industry. It's just something you're not going to find uh, with, with, with other other uh, other uh, software in the industry that I've seen. So there might be some out there, but none, none of them that are on our scale. So it's actually an advantage for you guys. And it's, a, um, it's something that I think we deserve pointing out. Uh, so let's get back to the, the, the roadmap here. So uh, taking a look at what we're focused on in 2024. So I can sum it up really kind of uh, with this slide here. Uh, Marcus said at the first of this call that we're the all-in-one uh, solution. We're going to continue that, right? We're going to continue to double down on, on being that all-in-one solution. Um, this is not something that's new, right? So if you look at what's on the screen right now, this is not something that's that's brand new. Everything that we do innovation-wise inside of uh, the Hostway platform is to try to make sure that we're, we're that one-stop shop for you, right? Um, so this is not a refocus or anything like that. This is just kind of explaining what we're what we're looking to do. So we're just doubling, tripling down on being that true all-in-one solution. Um, and the biggest feedback that we've got from our clients over the last you know, probably two years, especially particularly over the last year, is they're tired of clicking outside of Hostway and going to other products and other softwares to go do things, or even just other websites to go do things. 
Um, so, for example, if you look back at uh, owners, uh, not owner statements, but well, yeah, owner statements and, and also um, uh, some of the other rental agreements and things like that, that you're having to go to DocuSign, you're having to use Excel spreadsheets. That's been our goal is to bring that inside. So these, this is not new. Um, so clients just don't want to click outside of Hostaway. We get that, right? Um, so what we're going to try to do, we're not what we're trying to do, what we're doing, what we're focusing on is bringing every, everything inside of Hostaway. Um, you guys have asked, this is what we're doing, right? So we started looking on the last year with our secondary product that we just released, which is our Smart Lux integration. We had brought it up earlier, had some feedback already. That's the second product that we've ever released, you know, here at Hostaway. And it's been a, a, a huge success, right? Um, so that's just one thing. Clients came to us and said, we want to make sure that we can, we want to do Smart Lux uh, and control our Smart Lux from inside of Hostaway. We don't want to go to another website to do that. Great. Well, we got a solution for that now. Um, this year, we're focusing on, you know, sort of insurance and also revenue management. We want to bring insurance to those uh, customers of ours who have not even used insurance before. It's a big thing for us. We want to make sure that we're providing our customers with something that they have never even thought that they needed before or thought that they were too small to go out and grab, right? So that's going to be our insurance product is we're going to make sure that everybody gets a chance to make sure that they're protected. And then revenue management is something that comes up all the time. Uh, how do we go in and get the best pricing for our bookings, right? Um, so we're going to help out with that as well. Um, so this is a focus until 2020, 2024. Again, it's not a refocus, it's just kind of where our mind's at. Uh, and for, to sum it all up, you know, there's all these different products that are out there uh, and you can go and, and, and grab those and, and combine them and integrate them into Hostaway. And that's fine. They, they're still going to be there. But what we want to do is bring it in-house and provide the same level of promises that we provide on our property management software. So our 24-7 support, uh, our customer success, our, our industry leading fu uh, funding, right? Uh, we're not a fly by night company. We're not we're not going anywhere, right? Uh, so we're going to make sure that we bring that all into one spot, and ha you have kind of one place to go uh, and 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 have all of the information and all the tools that you need uh, to run your short term uh, business. So uh, I'm hope I'm glad to introduce the second part of this roadmap. So hopefully I didn't go too far off there, Maria, from what you're saying already. But I'm gonna turn it back over to Maria to go over some of these uh, highlights. Thanks, guys. Not at all. Thank you, Josh. By the way, we're going to uh, run now the poll for the next 30, 45 seconds. You can see it in the, uh, uh, I think it's a pop-up that comes up in on the Zoom's main screen. So basically the question is, what was your favorite host that we were releasing in 2023? And we give you several options. And host and panelists cannot vote. So sorry, guys, we cannot vote. All right, so we'll give the results at the end of the uh, of the presentation. So maybe we can go ahead introducing what it's going to be the Roma for 2024. All right, so a little bit of a sneak peek of what's going to happen across the year in 2024. Uh, and then on the next slide, I will zoom in a little bit more on the first two quarters on Q1 and Q2. Disclaimer, this is not the only things that we're going to do. We're going to do more things. But the uh, these are what we've seen from when we listen to you guys from the feedback that we receive um, across multiple different channels. Uh, the things that have been requested the most, highly requested features, right? And that we want to tackle in 2024. But more is going to come as well. Um, we will add bulk calendar editing capabilities. Uh, the calendar today is very uh, easy to use. It allows you uh, to change price availabilities, but it's missing a little bit, uh, a little bit of capability of making it easier to update large amounts of uh, of days, for instance. So we will add more. Um, make it easy this process for you in, in 2024. Um, we will directly integrate with QuickBooks. Actually, I had a question in the chat just now uh, regarding, are we going to integrate with an accounting tool? Yes, we will. And it's going to be QuickBooks. Uh, maybe later in the year, we will um, see if other, uh, other maybe Shadow or others. But to start with, we will start with, uh, with QuickBooks integration. And this integration is going to be based uh, on on our current financial reporting or financial um, uh, feature. Uh, and we will allow you to create invoices, create bills, create uh, track expenses, etc. in QuickBooks as well. So uh, you can do your accounting there. Um, 
we will add uh, localization to the booking engine and to the mobile app. Uh, we definitely uh, see a big increase in customers coming from uh, in Europe, in other locations as well. So we're going to localize the booking engine and, and the mobile app. Specifically, I think it's important for obviously guests that speak a different language other than English and for other users like owners, cleaners, etc. cetera, that's um, in those places, maybe English is not the main language of communication. Um, also, a bit important as well for you guys uh, to be notified for any issue on your listings in Airbnb. And the reason why we want to bring this API also uh, to, to the our integration with Airbnb is because we know that if you guys don't take action on any issue that Airbnb notifies you regarding a listing, your payout suffers. They actually withhold the payout and we don't want that to happen. So we don't want you to miss any important notifications and that, therefore we're bringing those notifications to to the to the dashboard to host away. You can use the uh, normal settings of notification that we have today to receive those and then act upon them as well. Um, not here, but we are adding more AI capabilities as well to the products in 2024. We are experimenting with a few things just now, uh, but I hope we can bring more later on in the year. So uh, on the next slides, Zooming in a little bit was coming in in the next two quarters, Q1, Q3. We're going to add more improvements to Smalllox, in particular, uh, the ability to use the last four digits of a telephone number, which I know is being highly requested. Also, the possibility to create offline uh, codes um, and more to come after that. On the financial reporting side of things, uh, we will add more granular permissions to financial reporting. Many of you have asked us, uh, what if I want to give a specific access only to the analytics tab or only to the uh, listings analytics or the, uh, the occupancy report or expenses? You will be able to do that uh, because we will add more flexibility to the user management tool and therefore uh, more granular permissions as well. We will add uh, SEO capabilities, more SEO capabilities to the booking engine to make sure that your um, website ranks uh, better. I saw a, a customer that shared a website just now. It was really good, very impressed. The name is uh, outofofficevacations.com. Go check it, booking.outofofficevacations.com. Check the website, it's pretty good, good job. Um, the we will also improve the performance of the booking engine because we know that it's important for guests to make to um that it loads fast that it's, it performs well um automated verbal reviews so the ability to uh, automate the response to the uh, to the guest through our modules or through our review modules continue on the mobile app improvements i already mentioned that before and the quickbooks integration and again, this is just a, a selection of the things that we're going to do. In the background, we continue working on improving the, uh, the on making sure that the platform performs well, that it's stable, that you don't have any downtimes. And that's going to be the theme for 2024. All right, so... All right. Yeah. So uh, before we get to the Q&A part here, uh, if you need <clears throat> need any support, we have a help icon in the dashboard that you can use. Uh, and we highly recommend you use our customer success team, whose only job is really to make sure that you get the value out of the platform that you're, you're paying for. If there's a functionality that you haven't been able to figure out how to get it to work for you, or there's one that you you don't know how to get started or or you haven't utilized it fully, or you just want to know if there are things you're doing manually that can be automated, usually they, they can be automated, then please schedule a call. Of course, our, our support guide has uh, on support.hostaway.com has a lot of instructions and guides as well. But if you want a real human being to just walk you through how to do it, that's uh, that's now available. Great, so I think we can now share the results of the poll. 
All right. So there's a little bit of a tie between Google Vacation Rentals, uh, ChatGPT, and SmartLocks. Great. This is as as expected. It's a fragmented industry. What that really means is that there's there's a lot of people who, in theory, do the same thing. We rent out properties. Uh, but in practice, the the reality is that it's it's very different depending on well, even within one area, there's different type of properties. They have different guests with different needs, they're used for different purposes, and it's just many different businesses. But I I wanted to highlight the Google vacation rental. This is something that is free and it's going to stay free. It's also something that you you have to be on because your competitors, if they're not there yet, they're going to be there soon. And this is the way people will find vacation rentals and book them. And if you're a property manager, this is great for you because you get it as a direct booking, which means you can charge a commission from your owner. So instead of paying that 15% to Airbnb, you can pay it to yourself if you use Google vacation rental. Um, but now let's go to the questions. There was, the first questions that came there, uh, someone put it in the chat as well about Verbo and uh, what does it mean that you can choose to give 10% commission? So I'll give a bit of history of vacation rentals here. Verbo used to be the yellow pages. Okay, we have on the call a lot of people who don't know what yellow pages mean. It means like a, a list of people you can use in certain situations. Let's say you want a plumber, you can find a plumber in the yellow pages. Verbo used to be like that. You could find a property manager that has properties. You can give them a phone call and book your property. Now on Verbo uh, today, just like on most platforms today, you can just book your place directly. Um, but some people, uh, especially those who, let's say were active vacation rental renters 20 years ago. So someone who's a bit older, at least 20 years older today, uh, might give you a call and say, hey, I saw, found this property on Verbo um, and I'd like to book it with you. That's what Verbo is referring to. So you have the ability to choose that it's a direct booking, which means that you you got the booking yourself, or you can uh, say that, tell Verbo that it came from Verbo and uh, then you will pay Verbo 10%. You might be wondering, what's the advantage here? Well, Verbo is quite an extreme platform. The properties that perform there, they perform really well. And their daily rates are usually higher than on any other platform. But the reason they perform well is that they get high up in the search results. How do you get high up in the search results? Well, like any business out there, you would probably promote the activities that make the most money. In other words, the properties that get the most bookings from Verbo will keep getting the most bookings from Verbo. This is why you may want, if you're getting a booking from Verbo by a phone call or an email, you may want to pay Verbo for that booking so that you can get more of them in the future. So uh, yeah, that was the the long answer about Verbo for buy it here. Now, yeah, uh, Josh, Ria, I could take here one from Robert. When you say chat GPT replies, replies to what? So are uh, in the unified inbox that we have, which collects the messages from uh, all the, the booking channels, uh, you have a button where you can just click create reply uh, using ChatGPT. And ChatGPT will give you a draft response. So it doesn't send it automatically because you can Google this if you want. We have uh, our sales team have reported that every now and then ChatGPT goes into pirate mode and starts sp speaking like a pirate. Yeah. Uh, it's not only that way, it's also at other places. So that's why we don't send a message to the guest. But yeah, Maria, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, Marcus. Basically, uh, it's able to read the message from the guest and provide a response based on the message. And you can fine tune it, you can configure the tone as well, right? So you, what type of tone do you want to respond? So a tone is all part of, part of your brand and how do you sell yourself to the guests, right? It can be more formal, more informal, uh, probably not pirate, or maybe if you have a theme, a pirate theme, uh, um, a property that's appropriate, but I wouldn't recommend it as a normal kind of tone to respond to guests. 
All right. Jeff is asking if we can expand the uh, 140 character count on SMS um, mm -hmm. because the guest portal links are too long. Um, now, I happen to be from the country that invented and sent the first SMS. That's uh, that's Finland. And uh, on behalf of the entire nation of Finland, I can say, no, we cannot expand that. It will never be expanded. It will always be 140 characters and it will never change. Um, what might change, though, is we might have to rethink on the, on the guest portal. Uh, one option you always have is to send it as a WhatsApp message, because then it doesn't have any any length limits here's a nice question from andrew air dna recently bought uplisting do you think hostaway will buy things like price labs um like i said consolidation is going to take place and it is we'll, we'll we'll have to see what the future brings um but it's uh it's a very good uh good question i wish i was able to comment more in detail um but in general the reason why acquisitions are taking place is that the market is diverging into those who are stagnating and those who are winning. And this is because the market for vacation rental software is maturing. Uh, usually when you have a young market, like we see right now in AI, I'm sure you're using tools in AI. I guarantee you 10 years from now, none of those will be available. Instead, what's going to happen two years from now, there's going to come some, a couple of tools that in the beginning are very small, but 10 years from now, they will be the only ones that are left. And that's exactly what's happening in the, in the vacation rental software space. There used to be hundreds of companies just five, 10 years ago. Now there's going to be a couple of them left. So consolidation is going to keep happening. Thanks for asking, Andrew. Okay, so as, as a customer success team here helping just a limited time, I found Hospitable was great at first, but then ghosted and tried to upsell for better services. Yeah, so we, yeah, we're not going anywhere. Uh, so they're they're not here just to help right now. They're 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 here twenty four seven. Uh, we've got two 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 teams when it comes to we've got three teams, but two teams that are that are here to support you after onboarding, and that's our customer success team, uh, and uh, which are basically your business advisors here at Hostway and advisors here at Hostway, and our support team, which is kind of like a reactive break fix. So we're not going anywhere. We're heavily invested into that. Uh, and real quick, before I forget, someone said they loved our webinars. Uh, we actually launched a week new webinar series that's going to be every week, every Thursday. It's our customer success office hours. It's for our, um, uh, our customers to get together and kind of see what's going on with Hostway, learn some best practices, ask questions. It's kind of ask the experts as well. I just dropped it into the chat. You'll see that page. If you'll save that page, we update it every week to register for our new webinar series. So thanks, guys. It's a question here from also for Google Vacation Rentals. Uh, someone that is now with Hospitable, if they join HostAway, will they need to reconnect to HostAway from zero? Actually, the connection is super simple. Uh, it's one button away, so it doesn't take any effort. All right, Maria has a question for you from Misty. Can we get more details about the smart lock feature? Will it be something that remotely connects to the lock to generate new codes, check the status? How does it work? Well, that's exactly it, right? So is the the remote management of the uh, of the uh, of the lock and the creation, the automatic creation of the codes and the automatic sending of those codes uh, to the guest? Right, so you, it's the the whole flow of the management of of the of the code for a reservation uh, directly from from host away. There are other things that you can do as well. You can um, uh, activate the activate a code from host away. You can uh, open the uh, the lock. You can uh, close it again. You can actually uh see more information about the uh the the door lock itself so the the battery more details about uh if the if the um of the guest etc and we are going to add um apart from the features that i mentioned earlier on so support for um the last four digits of a telephone number and creating offline codes we're going to add throughout 2024 more features um and also a lot of login as well. So you know when did the guests enter the property, when did they leave, who in your team, who in your staff or team members actually uh, 
uh, use the functionality of the small ops by sending codes or deleting codes, etc. So you are more in control as well. Our friend Connor wants to know what's what's your favorite Marcus Maria and myself's favorite release uh, or addition to Hostway in this last year. I'll let you go first, Marcus. I think it was uh, ChatGPT. I have to go with that. We realized that we we have to be first in the market. That I find it really. It's just really exciting when something like that happens, when you have to be, because running a business, you have to be so proactive. If you just sit around and wait what's going to happen, one day you'll wake up and your business is gone. It's bankrupt. That's that's what's going to happen if you're just being reactive. Uh, you got to be proactive 99% of the time. But But every now and then you get an opportunity where things come up and you just have to react. And you will simply be measured on whether you reacted fastest or the best and i think we by being the first ones to bring an ai solution into a pms uh i think we did exactly the right thing and it was it was really exciting so for me i think uh this is a small one but one that has brought a ton of benefits to to our customers um the expenses on the on um, the automation of the expenses in financial reporting and refunds because that actually actually saves time from having to go from one place to the other and uh, trying to build things on spreadsheets or going to Stripe and manage things from there. So it's I want to raise a flag for our you know financial team that they were tirelessly to make sure that it's, uh, it's the best financial tools in the in the industry. I would say. Yeah, I I would say Google Vacation Rentals was probably my favorite, and and I would say it's probably the the least championed right now because people just don't understand what's going on with Google. And quite frankly, I didn't either. And actually me and Marcus met with the, the Google team over in, uh, last year. And I asked them, you know, when are you going to start charging for this? When are you going to start charging for Google vacation rentals? And they said, well, we're not going to charge for it. I said, now, come on, when are you going to start charging for it? You know, we, we haven't told really our customers about how to, you know, they should go and adopt this. We're, we're using, you know, it's free right now. And they said, no, our plan here at Google is to make sure that nobody leaves outside of Google. And so go look at our flight solution. You can see that whenever you go book flights and everything, it, we want every, all the eyes to stay inside of Google. That's where that's where we make our money. So it's going to always be free. And that really got me thinking. It's the easiest, probably, is, I'd say the second easiest channel to adopt on a Hostway platform. You go in there, you set it up in a couple, couple of clicks and you're on Google. And you might not see a lot come in at Google right now, but every time I talk with a client, I say it's worth going and doing. It's very easy to do. It's free to do. It's not going to cause you any money, cost you any money. And the thing is with Google, if you can go back based on their track record, you would want to be an early adopter into whatever Google is putting out there. Uh, because if you you adopt it now and you get on now, you're you're going to be ahead of everybody else. And we were the first to really bring that to market as well. So kind of in the same um, uh, tune as what Mark was saying with ChatGPT, we were the first ones where Google Vacation wants to really uh, expand with that. And I just encourage everybody to go and adopt Google Vacation Rentals. Uh, like I said, it's easy. Uh, it's free to use. It's not going to cost you anything. Uh, and it's just a, it, it's a, be, be ahead of the curve. And the second part of that is, is was um, uh, as Connor was asking, what are we excited about in 2024? I, I would say the the advancements of what we can do with ChatGPT is what Marcus is saying, uh, because there's so much more. We, we've, we've, we've just kind of scratched the surface of what that would mean inside of uh, the HostWay platform. So I'm excited to see the advancements that will be made this year in that. Absolutely. So there's another question here from Dan. Uh, will the SmartLux feature later be expanded to include more smart home management? Well, that actually is a conversation that I had with the team today. Uh, we are discovering, uh, adding all the types of um, uh, smart things, so thermostats, any uh, temperature controllers, etc. cetera. Um, so that's definitely something that I'm seeing that we will likely uh, start bringing, not maybe at the beginning of the year, but probably in the second half, we will be looking into bringing more of those here to the SmartLux product. All right, now Scotty has a pretty technical question here. Hi, Scotty, you are an Octorate user and you're asking if Hostaway is able to manage multi-site vacation rentals, so whole unit by villa and also multi-unit in one location, apart hotel type. Uh, you're probably gonna be surprised by this, but yes, we can. We can handle both of them. So for those of you who don't know, there's, um, there's basically three ways of, of renting out properties. Um, one of them is just single 
properties. You got a, a condo, maybe you have a house and you rent that out. That's the way I would say almost 100% of the inventory on Airbnb works. But there's another way as well. Uh, a lot of people have bigger houses or maybe units that can be combined uh, and and you can rent it out on Hostaway so that you set up an entire unit. Uh, let's, let's say a, a duplex for simplicity. That's a house that has a door in the middle and you can divide it into two units. So what you can do is you can rent out either the entire house or one of the halves and then the calendar is automatically blocked for those. So you can link them. But then there's something called multi-units. That's when you have a house where you have 20 identical units and the person who is booking that uh, booking them doesn't know which one they're going to end up staying in. That's the case 100% of the time when you book a hotel, unless you book a specific suite. Um, but uh, there's very few vacation rental softwares that support all three configurations and Hostaway is one of them. So uh scotty please do reach out to me marcus at hostaway.com i would love to have a chat and hear about your experiences but thanks for for asking there was also a question related to this on the chat can we use uh google vacation rentals for marketing hotels maria maybe you could share as far as i know it's a different product so the google Vacation rentals doesn't actually support hotels. You need Google Hotels. You need so. to have. You need to integrate with the Google Hotels product. Uh, it is different. It's within the same Google um, uh, Google Travel kind of overall product. Uh, we integrated just Google Vacation Rentals. Um, we might have plans in the future to also add hotels. Scotty keeps giving good questions. Is our booking engine as easy to use for potential guests as Airbnb? Yes, that's the way it's designed to be because uh, there's a reason why Airbnb is so successful in this space. They have spent a lot of time doing research on, for example, what color should be, should a button be? And they have done it better than anyone else. And we, we have no reason to try to reinvent the wheel so uh, that's why we built the booking engine to make sure that it follows the best practices. In other words, that it works exactly the way people expect it to. That being said, it's very customizable. So you can you can choose if you only support inquiries, if you want direct bookings, you can choose what kind of information, how you break down the prices, your own domain. Yeah, there's a lot of functionality there if you want to customize it. And if you don't, it's going to be very easy to take into use. You know, the, the, there's a lot of questions about how do I do this? How do I do that? Uh, or can I get some help with this? Can I get some help with that? Absolutely. Again, our customer success team, we're we're the largest team here at Hostaway. We're going to continue to invest in that. And click the need help icon inside the Hostaway platform or use that link that I, I put in the channel a little bit earlier to schedule a quick 15-minute call with our team. We're there to help you out, guys. So we realize it's a robust platform, and that's why I invest so heavily in this because there's so many things you can do inside of Hostaway. And then Maria, so the question here from Jeff on uh, upsell feature, uh, any uh, any updates for um, any advancements that are coming along with upsell for 2024? Yes, so I think we also will try to add more marketing capabilities to the booking engine. What exactly those are going to be? Uh, we have some ideas that we want to bring to the booking engine. Upsells definitely it's or improving the way that upsells go through the um uh through the booking funnel right uh because today what happens is the upsell is at the end of the funnel is at the end of the uh, of the booking process on the checkout page uh but we want to improve that um so the guest is able to make the decision to buy the upsell before it's actually on the payment page so let's see if we can uh, improve the conversion there. Yeah, I would say that we we one of the things, Jeff, is that particularly on the upsell or anything that's going to bring you time or money uh, is is something we'll always be figuring out how to how do we do better? How do we get you more revenue? How do we continue to advance that? That was a big release actually last year as well. I forgot about that one, but yeah, that was a big one that we we put out last year to help you guys out with, with revenue. So uh, good question, Jeff. There's a good uh, question here from Dean Anderson and also from Misty. So Dean is asking, why do the smart locks cost extra money? 
still happy, just curious. And then Misty is actually saying which of the new features are free, which ones will cost extra and how much. These are, I think, fantastic questions. One of our values here at Hostway is critical thinking. Uh, that's what they tell our staff every day, that if you're doing something and you don't know why you're doing it, you should be asking yourselves. And if you can't find the answer, you should be asking someone else. And that's exactly what Dean is exercising here, critical thinking. The reason why smart locks cost extra money is the business model of the smart lock producers themselves. So when you go out and you buy a smart lock, let's pay, let's say you pay 150 to have it, uh, that is about the same as the cost of the lock to produce it. Because you can't just make a cheap plastic lock. It has to actually work for many years. But the whole point of a smart lock is not to have the physical device. It's the ability to connect to it online. Now that requires a lot of maintenance. You can't have a cheap software built by these smart lock providers that just breaks all the time and it's offline because people wouldn't get into their homes. Like this is a software that has to work and that's very expensive. Now you might be wondering, wow, how come I have a smart lock and I don't pay any monthly fee? Well, you're right there on the answer. The way these smart lock providers make money is they don't charge a monthly fee to maintain that system and make sure that you actually can open the door when you want to uh, by charging money from the people who are using the door. They charge money from the companies that provide software like Hostaway. So every time we program a lock, we have to pay the manufacturer uh, an amount in order to do that. And that's not money that they they you know just take because they can. That's money that is needed to maintain the ability to program the lock in the first place. And um, and this is why it costs extra money. So we are providing the software here and the service and the support, and we make sure that it, it works, but it's just not, it doesn't make any sense because their entire business model is based on the idea that we pay them money. And that's why we have to charge some money for that. And I could maybe name another example here um is google travel we they don't charge any money from us that's not their business model and that's why we're not charging anything extra uh we, we just offer it to the to the users so uh most of the features that we improved those 250 releases we did last year are of course free of charge but when it comes to something where we have to pay a third party in order to be able to develop it in the first place then we have to charge something for it because we are already paying for the development. But then if I have to pay for the use, if we don't get any extra revenues, it's just not viable. So that's why smart locks cost extra money. And that's why all our competitors charge extra for smart lock integrations as well. But excellent question there, Dean. All right. Any final words from Josh or Maria? I see we're up on, on time. This will be recorded. It will be available. No, thank you very much for listening and watching. Looking yeah, forward to you. come back and tell you what we did. Yeah, exciting first webinar of 2024. I can't believe it's the first webinar. We're already we're only five days, six days away from the first month already in 2024, but very exciting. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks, everyone. See you next month.